Hi everyone, we're gonna get started in just a bit, but I wanna welcome you to our first career guidance webinar of the fall of 2021. While we wait for everyone to log on, we do wanna do some introductions and hear a bit more about you, our audience. So if you'd like, please share in the chat box where in the world you're joining us from. And if you have an internship already in the United States, please tell us where in the US you plan to do your training. If you don't have an internship, that's fine. Maybe tell us where in the United States uh, you hope to do your training. Uh, I'll start. My name is Tammy Nicholson. I'm the program manager for the Career Training USA program here at InterExchange. I'm currently joining this webinar from our office in New York, where InterExchange is based. And I'm joined by my colleague, Fatima Rodriguez, who will be presenting today's session. Hi everyone, um, I'm glad that you can join us today for this webinar and we're really excited to help you find it uh, and help you find ways to find an internship and then also learn more about the J-1 visa process. Awesome. So we have a couple people who have uh, written in the chat box. We have some people joining us from uh, Jamaica. Uh, we have a participant uh, or a hopeful participant from Russia, uh, Lorraine, who is currently in France, but uh, hopes to intern next summer in New York. And it looks like we have uh, a handful of people who uh, who hope to do their uh, their internships in in California as well, in San Francisco, Los Angeles. So uh, a pretty wide array of uh, attendees and uh, uh, and and hopeful places where people can do can do their internship. Um, like I said, today we're going to discuss the logistics of finding an internship and applying for either the J-1 visa or uh, the J, I'm sorry, the J-1 intern visa or the J-1 trainee visa. This is our first webinar of 10 that we have scheduled every Tuesday at 2 p.m. New York time, so whatever time it is in, in your current time zone, and we hope these sessions will help you prepare for an internship in the United States. Future sessions will discuss things like writing resumes, finding mentors, U.S. business culture. Next week, we'll discuss the skills needed to be an attractive candidate to host employers. So we hope you can join us for that session as well. Before we begin the presentation, I just want to note that everyone is muted. So if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat box, just as you did to tell us where, where you're calling in from. Uh, we'll read off those questions as they come in, especially if they pertain to that point of the presentation. And if you submitted any questions with your registration, we have already woven them into the presentation or we've built in some pauses where we'll answer those questions, so you don't need to submit that question to us again. And the last note before I turn off my video and pass it off to Fatima, this presentation is being recorded, so if you have to leave early, everyone will get a copy of this presentation. You can review it at your, your own leisure, pass it on to, to friends who might be interested, uh, and, and you can, uh, if there's anything we say that you'd like to go back afterwards, you'll get that in the next day or so. So with that, I'm going to pass this presentation off to Fatima, and and let her get us started. Great, thank you so much, Tamman. So today we're going to just go over quickly the overview of, for this webinar. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about who InterExchange is, um, what we do and how we can help you. And then we're going to talk about what are the J-1 intern and J-1 trainee visas there are actually 15 types of um, diff um, different J-1 visa categories, but again, today we're going to focus on the intern and trainee visas. We'll also talk about who is eligible for the J-1 intern trainee visa, how you could potentially find an internship or training program in the United States, and then once you find that internship in the U.S., how do you go about applying for the J-1 trainee um, intern and trainee visas? So to start. We're, um, we'll first define who we are. Who is InterExchange? InterExchange is a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to promote cross cultural awareness through a variety of different programs, such as the intern training, um, intern training program, the work and travel program. We also have volunteer programs and language learning programs. We are located, um, as Tamman mentioned, in New York City, and we do represent more than 90 countries in our worldwide, worldwide partner network. So the career training program is just one of six programs within InterExchange 
but even within um, the career training programs, we've had students arrive from all over the world, um, such as Canada, South Korea, Colombia, different parts of Europe, um, and such. So we, we really do have a wide of di um, different participants representing uh, represented from different um, countries. Another thing to note that is unique about the career training program is that we work directly with participants. So once you do find a host employer, you don't need to work with um, an agency or a local agency in your home country or even a lawyer to um, apply with a J-1 visa sponsor. Once you find your host employer, you can come directly to us, um, inter-exchange as your J-1 visa sponsor. Um, sponsor and start the applica um, application process on our website. Um, and what this does, it makes the process, um, um, most importantly, less expensive, um, less time consuming, and then essentially just less back and forth between all the, um, all the people who would be involved in this process for you to come to the United States and, and train with your host employer. So, um, now we're going to define um, what are the intern and trainee visas. So for those of you who aren't familiar, the J-1 visa is a non-immigrant visa for anyone who wants to participate in a work or study-based exchange visitor program. So what this means is that the J-1 visa is required for any type of internship in the United States, regardless of program length or even whether it is in paid or unpaid internship. And because of this, this, this does differ from the ESTA visa, which would only allow you to come into the United States for tourism purposes. Now the mission for the J-1 visa is to bridge cultural, um, is to bridge cultural exchange between citizens of the United States and people from other countries through a variety of different methods um, and different ways. And that is the reason why there are just so many different um, J-1 visa categories. Um, but again, specifically, we're talking about the intern and trainee visa. So the J-1 visa is not just a work visa and it is not meant to be used for any ordinary employment purposes. It's also not a pathway to citizenship or to residency um, to or to any other types of visas. So you're not um, able to, you know, um, change statuses while you are on the J-1 visa in the United States. And as I mentioned, you know, one unifying theme for all the J-1 visas is that um, they're meant for cultural exchange. So I do want to stress that, you know, when your program does end, you do need to depart the United States to share what you've learned here with those who are back home. Now we're going to um, get um, going to delve into more the, about the differences between an intern training program and then the work and travel program, just because like um, the work and travel program is a pretty popular program and some people tend to confuse the two a little bit. So the intern and training programs are open to anyone who is currently a student or a recent graduate or, you know, someone who's maybe um, gr um, graduated six months ago or even um, um, 12 months ago. Um, I, uh, excuse me, <laughs> the internship program or training program that you do must be related to your field of study. So for example, if you are in marketing, then you would have to do a related training program or internship that would um, primarily be focused in marketing. Or if you're studying architecture, then you would essentially be doing an internship in an architecture firm. The, um, the intern and training programs can last up to 12 months or even in some cases, 18 months. And if you are obtaining an intern or trainee visa, it can start at any time of the year, whether that be summer, winter, fall, um, and start at any month, any day. The program can um, may also be unpaid in, circum uh, in certain circumstances. And later in this presentation, we'll talk about the different requirements for, um, for a paid or unpaid internship. Um, additionally, a vital component 
component of the intern or training program is that um, intern training programs must have a training plan. So your host has to create a training plan that they would offer to you during your time with with the company outlining you know what you will be learning and essentially how you would be trained during the duration of your program so unlike the intern and training program the work and travel program is only open to students it doesn't necessarily have to be related to your field of study so if you are you know a business major or if you're uh, a science major bio major you can actually come and come to the United States and potentially work in a restaurant or for the summer or um, or a ice cream stand, for example. Um, the difference is the work and travel program is usually three to four months and is considered to be a seasonal program because the main focus is more so for ordinary work purposes. And um, it's important to note that work and travel programs must always be paid. Uh, there, the training plan is not required for work and travel. So in, in that sense, again, it is different from the career um, training program because there is that one less paperwork that you would have to worry about. Um, again, the focus isn't on training and more on like seasonal work. And that's essentially like the main differences between the two programs. So the goal of the intern and trainee program is for participants to gain practical skills and expertise in their academic field of study. It's also to learn US business practices and techniques that would really help you further your career once you have completed your internship or training program or once you have graduated. So like, like other programs, it's also, um, it's, it's also meant for you to understand US culture and society, and again, to return home and share that knowledge that you have gained here in the US with, other, with, um, with others. Now, from the host employer side, this program really allows host employers to engage with international interns like yourself and allow their employees to really learn about other cultures and other skills to essentially develop a network of an individuals who would have this active understanding of their business or um, our culture and society. And this in turn will also, you know, give host employees the ability to um, incorporate participants like, like yourselves <laughs> again into their community by providing uh, a culturally, culturally rich experience that is really the key component of this program. So again, it, it really is a two-way street. It really benefits both the participants and the host employers um, in, in this kind of program. So um, I would like to pause here for any questions before I get into this, um, the Erasmus impact study. Um, Taman, is there any questions? Um, we do have, it looks like two questions that have come in so far. Um, the first is about the length of the program. So because the intern is one program and the trainee is another program, we have a question from someone who wants to do an intern program. What is the maximum length of time someone can do an inter a J1 internship? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so interns may, um, may intern with a host company for up to 12 months. And then if um, you mentioned the trainee program, just to clarify, for those who are interested in and qual uh, are eligible for the trainee program, they may uh, train with a host employer for up to 18 months. Great. And the other question that came in pertains to eligibility. Can you clarify who is eligible to apply? Can it be someone who is at a, a master's level or is it only someone who is, is working towards their bachelor's degree? Um, so the intern program is definitely eligible for both um, types of degrees um, that you are per that you would be pursuing. So anyone who's pursuing a master's degree, a bachelor de bachelor's degree, even a PhD are eligible to be um, to be considered as an intern. So um, even if you have, you know, even if you have graduated up to a year. So if you decide, you know, 
you just finished your bachelor's degree or you finished your master's degree and you're not ready to quite um, intern in the US at that point in time during while you are pursuing your degree, then you are still eligible up to 12 months after your graduation date. So yeah. And Excellent. we'll actually discuss further, um, you know, in the presentation more about eligibility requirements. Great, thank you. Those are the only two questions that have come in so far. Awesome. Thanks, Tamman. So um, we at InterExchange love to show this slide before, um, just to really show you the benefit of an international internship, you know, here as shown um, in the Erasmus Plus Impact Study. Um, this impact study is from 2019, as we don't necessarily have the 2020 data just yet. But again, we like to show this because it really surveys um, employers and students who have participated in these types of programs. And we do find, and here it, we do find that 64% of employers consider an international experience to be an important asset for candidates when they do recruit for open positions. 72% um, of students report that their international experience was beneficial for finding their first job out of once they have graduated university. And then 80% of alumni state that their job, the job that they're doing now has international characteristics. And I do want to stress and note um, about the alumni that have been surveyed because they did find a job much quicker than students who didn't do an international program. And they do also report higher values of job security and future career po prospects. Um, so again, we just want to stress and show that how important it is to you know, do um, an exchange program such as this and really stress that mobility is an important factor for post-graduation success. And those who have, have participated in these types of program are able to um, couple their international experience with, with practical training that is related to their future career. Um, they, they do have a greater advantage because they're able to simultaneously build um, their hard skills and soft skills while um, you know adapting to a foreign environment and it really just shows your ability to adapt and be willing to be um, in an uncomfortable or different environment from what you're used to so in in that sense we do know that international programs have um, higher value and will definitely have will definitely contribute to your professional growth and um, now we're going to go into why you should intern abroad um, and these are some of the um, these are is one of the questions that we like to ask participants to really think about um, why why they intern abroad and the five responses that we have here are like typically um, what we what we get from participants when we do ask them this and I'm just going to go through you know each one a little bit further um, students tell us that they do want to come to the United States because they want to increase their knowledge of U.S. culture and increase their intercultural communication skills um, so for example maybe they have seen um, or learned about the United States um, and its cultures on TV or maybe they've seen it um, on social media or they read books about it and they just kind of want to experience that for themselves and really compare what they have observed you know from different types different types of media and um, experience it for themselves um, we also know that a lot of students want to learn flexibility and independence and gain that self-confidence that might come from being in a culture um, that is very different from their own so you know some students tell us that they want to intern um, or some students also tell us that they want to intern at specific organizations or that might be in New York City or Los Angeles um, mostly because you know the U.S. do offer um, access to global markets and key organizations um, to headquarters that may only be based in the United States. Um, others tell us that 
um, they thought they they think of the U.S. to be um, having a lot of dynamic and innovative workplaces, such as you know Silicon Valley or um, different different <laughs> different offices in um, New York City, as I mentioned, or the Research Triangle in North Carolina. Um, so it's the idea that they would you know have a close connection or to a supervisor or um, a certain type of um, workplace. Um, and um, <laughs> sorry, and also have exposure to new technology and methodology. And because we know that every country has their own technology and their own methods, um, interns want to be able to experience, again, something that is different from their own and gain that exposure to different different ways of thinking and different way, different approaches to certain problems or projects. So moving forward, we actually do poll our students after their program to just find out how successful they were in achieving their goals while they were here in the United States. And we found that not about 96.5% say that they have learned new skills and that would benefit, benefit their future careers. And 93% say that they were able to achieve their learning objectives. Um, and similarly, um, they, they said that their host employer closely followed the training plan, um, which is super important for us and something that we, we really do like to stress. And again, we'll talk a little bit later about more about how we um, ensure that the training plans follow, um, closely followed. And lastly, about 92.9% um, said that their skills and capabilities increased um, at the end of their program. And we're really, we, we get really excited when we see these types um, of um, feedback and, uh, well, not essentially feedback, but um, we're glad to hear that um, participants are able to really meet these types of goals and we do encourage um, you all to really think about these goals um, before coming into the United States just so um, that you're able to measure these types of um, these types of um, these types of goals once you do complete um, your program in the United States. Um, we as an organization work really closely um, with host organizations and we do provide a lot of feedback and advice to host employers so that you may really take advantage of your time here in the United States and ensure that you're actually receiving the kind of training that you sought out to do here in the, in, in the US. So a, a way that we ensure that this happens for you is that we do monthly check-ins with all of our participants to make sure that the program is going as planned. And that the host employer understands their role in this internship and that they know that you as an exchange visitor are supposed to be learning and training, um, training, um, training and meeting the goals that were outlined in the training plan um, prior to coming to the US. And we do find that this leads to, you know, better training plan adherence and then and essentially program satisfaction amongst all our participants. So now that we kind of like gone over why you should come to the US and a little bit about J the J-1 visa, I want to talk a little bit about what is a J-1 visa sponsor. And the J-1 visa sponsor um, is an organization that's designated by the US Department of State to screen candidates um, to verify eligibility and suitability for program participation. So a way that um, we do this, we make sure that the participants have the appropriate course for, coursework. Um, the host organization that they're applying to is a legitimate organization who can really provide you that training and um, that the training itself is not in, is, is actually an internship or a training program and is not used for ordinary work or unskilled position that you know wouldn't really contribute to your um, future career success. Um, we also issue the required documentation um, um, that you will need to bring to the US Embassy to 
to secure your J-1 visa, and these forms are the DS-2019 form and the DS-7002 form. The DS-7002 form is the training plan, and then the DS-2019 um, is um, the form that essentially um, um, states that, you know, we are your sponsor, and that's something that you present to the U.S. Embassy uh, once you are approved. So, in addition to issuing documentation and ensuring um, eligibility, we are also responsible for monitoring interns and employers throughout the program. So what this means is that um, we, like during your program, while, when we are doing the monthly check-ins to ensure that everything's okay, we also mediate um, any issues that were, if that would come up, if there were to any come up, um, you know, if there's any problems at work or if you're having issues with health insurance or you're having issue, um, other miscellaneous types of issues, um, that's where we step in as a sponsor and really try to help and assist you with any, any problems that were to occur during your program. Additionally, uh, I do also want to note that your host employer is not your sponsor. So if there are um, Inter-exchange would be your J-1 visa sponsor. So if there are any issues with your host organization that you don't feel comfortable um, reporting directly to them, or if you would like to leave your organization, since um, maybe it, it just isn't a right fit or things are still wor work out, it doesn't mean that you have to leave the United States. You would first come to Inter-exchange and then we would discuss different options, um, for you to successfully complete your program, whether that is to change your host employer or um, maybe we can potentially step in and mediate any issues that you don't feel comfortable with discussing with your host employer. So we are definitely here to support you and make sure that make sure that if you do have any issues that you can come to us um, and we can help assist you with any of that. So, who is eligible to intern in the United States? And I always like to say that I hope everyone on this call is eligible to intern, um, but we'll go into a little bit more of the details in regards to the eligibility requirements to intern in the United States. So the first requirement is that you must be a current student or a recent graduate from outside the United States. So for example, anyone who is studying um, at a current university is eligible for the program. As I mentioned, if you have already graduated, um, you have 12 months to start your internship in the United States, which means um, you may need to probably start your application with InterExchange about 10 months um, after your graduation date, um, but if you know your internship eligibility does expire, um, then you may uh, may be able to apply as a trainee. Um, and we will get into a little bit more into the specifics of the training program offline if you if you do want to learn more about that program or if you aren't currently a university student because it is a little bit different from the internship program. But essentially, in order to qualify as a trainee, um, you simply need to have a diploma and then you have to have one year of professional work experience after your graduation that um, outside of the United States. So if you just um, if you did graduate and you start um, working in your home country and you still decide you want to do an internship, you you may potentially um, be eligible for a trainee traineeship and apply to their program. Um, additionally, the internship, uh, as I mentioned earlier, can last up to 12 months and a traineeship can actually stay um, last up to 18 months if you do qualify for the training program. So one of the um, popular questions that we do get is what type of internships can you do? There is a variety of different categories of internships that students or um, professionals may um, qualify for. There are six different categories that inter-exchange sponsors, and these are arts and culture, hospitality and tourism, information, media, and communications, 
bit, uh, management, business, commerce, and finance, um, public administration law, and then the STEM fields, including architecture. Um, these um, these six pretty much cover m most of the possible um, categories um, for sponsorship. Um, unfortunately, teaching and social sciences and even agriculture are outside of what we are designated um, to offer sponsorship for um, by the Department of State. And I will go into a little bit further about what types of internships are not allowed under um, are, uh, under um, these types of categories. So essentially, um, as I mentioned earlier, InterExchange cannot um, sponsor any unskilled or casual labor positions. So things such as waiting tables or doing um, secretarial work or administration work or um, you know working at an ice cream stand or a fast food restaurant um, these are types of programs that we wouldn't be able to sponsor additionally we wouldn't be able to sponsor any child care or elder care um, no clinical work social work medicine Again, anything that's related to animal care or handling or human care contact. And then um, lastly, um, anything <laughs> that is prohibited by the visa sponsor. So all of these, um, all of these sponsors, excuse me. So um, <laughs> uh, my apologies. So we do have a lot of different criteria and different rules. Um, one specific rule for Inter um, career training USA is that we actually don't allow internships where you have done work and travel programs. Um, I do want to just address this just in case you have done a work and travel program yourself. Uh, so, for example, maybe you have worked at a restaurant um, for la like last summer or this previous summer, and they would like you to do an internship um, in in a different department. We wouldn't um, allow this mostly because from past experience. We have seen some companies take advantage of this and take advantage of the participant and begin to use the participant for more ordinary work purposes and less focus on training. So we really do encourage you, if you would like to do a different, um, the J1 intern training program to find a new internship um, or in a new host company where you can receive the kind of training you would like. And, in our follow-up email, I just quickly want to say we will send you all of our requirements for the host organization, so you can check to see if um, the internship you found does meet the criteria for sponsorship. So with that, um, we'll go and talk a little bit more about what type of company can host you and what makes a company a suitable Hosts. Um, so some things to keep in mind while you're applying for internships and thinking about different companies that you might want to like intern with. Um, first things first, um, the the host company must have a, a professional space. So they need to have an office. You wouldn't be able to intern or train in someone's home. Um, we do understand that with COVID-19, there are a lot more remote internships that are happening right now, which is great. Um, and it's not something that we um, think is wrong in any way, <laughs> sense, um, shape or form. But the Department of State um, has um, has stated that the purpose of this visa is to have more of a face-to-face -face training. So it's really important that the professional ex professional space exists for you to to go in and out and speak with you know your supervisor in in person and really have that one-on-one -on -one, um, type of training that you wouldn't get in your home country. Additionally, there must be experienced staff to help a, help. Um, help you in achieving your objectives that are outlined in the training plan. So for example, if you're going to be, again, an architect or a graphic designer, a computer engineer, you need to have someone who's going to be able to teach you um, all the skill sets in those different types of areas. So you wouldn't be able to be in a computer engineering department that needs to you can't just be in like a computer engineering department that would need someone um, um, 
you so, sorry um you would you would essentially need someone to really assist you in um achieving those objectives and goals and not you know work in a certain department and not have the appropriate supervisor to really hone your skills and build off of what you already know additionally there needs to be continuous on-site supervision and mentoring um we do we do have a, a rule where we have there must be um, five full-time employees to one J1 intern. Um, and this is just a way that we um, ensure that you will get the appropriate um, appropriate supervision uh, even. And it's not, again, we don't look down on organizations that have less than five um, employees. It's just a way to ensure that, you know, just in case someone is in an office, um, you're you're always going to have someone to um, to receive supervision from or like guidance or, or or training. So every organization with that, every organization must have at least five full time staff for every intern that they host. Um, and that the program also does not displace U.S. workers. Um, so again, the intern can't fill any labor need that would be used for ordinary work purposes. This, um, you know, again, I want to stress is a training program, you know, after all. So additionally, organizations have to abide by occupational health and safety laws. We do require that every company um, shows a copy of their workers' compensation policy. In addition to that, we also have been doing COVID-19 vetting calls for all of our um, host organizations over the last year to make sure that the organization that you're going to is a safe place for you to train while you are here in the United States. So now that we talked about, you know, what kind of host can um, sponsor you, we're gonna go into uh, what should your training plan include? So the training um, the training plan or the DS7002 um, form is a document that the Department of State um, requires for the host employer to complete. Um, we, we review this document and make sure that it meets the rules and regulations of this program. So your training plan should um, include a structured and guided work-based learning um, plan in your academic field, and it should be tailored to your skills and experience. Um, there does need to be a balance between what you're going to learn from the organization and your ability to contribute and, and your ability to contribute to the horse, host organization. So you want to think about what projects will you be able to work on that might further the organization or even help you with some of your other colleagues and learn something, um, different types of skills and methodology that you may not already have access to in your home country. Additionally, the training plan should also um, should also be full time so or, or show that you'll be uh, excuse me the training plan needs to show that you will be interning or training full time so the minimum hours that we require is 32 hours per week and then a maximum of 45 hours per week and with that um, we also like to see that the training plan shows um, exposure to u.s culture in and out of the workplace so you're not just um you know just interning and training we need um we we want to see that you're actually engaging in u.s culture and that your host employer actually provides you with with these types of opportunities um so for example maybe your host employer actually includes you with happy hours or a summer barbecue or group outings with your coworkers to um maybe a hockey game or a basketball game you know um as the um as the uh, as the world permits at this point so we really want you to get a chance to experience what life is like um, in the u.s um, outside of the office space so now we're going to talk about um, if your internship can be paid this is the one question a lot of students are um, wondering and 
the answer is yes your internship in in most cases will be paid depending on your host employer's compensation package so programs exceeding four um exceeding six months um must also must always be paid at least the state um the state minimum wage however um all trainees must be paid regardless of the program length and any paid un, um, unpaid internships has to meet the U.S. Department of Labor criteria, which be which would be um, maybe getting credit at your home university um, or um, excuse me, um, yeah. So yeah, it, might, it has to meet the U.S. Department of Labor criteria for any unpaid internships, and we have that actually outlined on our website which we will be included in the resources that we follow up you with additionally um, your host organization organization may include non-monetary compensation packages and what we mean by this is that some host employers you know may potentially include housing or may potentially give you a stipend for food or transportation um, so there are a lot of different compensation packages that you may um, may receive depending on what on what your host um, provides you and it's something that you should consider when thinking about um, what host employer you would like to intern with however we did see you know in 2020 that 84.1 percent of our participants did receive a financial compensation um, averaging at 23 $2,300 a month, which is which is great and really shows that, you know, there are paid internships out there and it's it's definitely possible to find a paid internship here in the United States. So as I mentioned, um, you know, a compensation is something that you should consider when looking for an internship. There are definitely other things to consider when you are looking for a host organization. And the first, maybe one of the more important things is location. Um, you have to think about what location are you really gonna um, um, enjoy yourself? What location do you see yourself even like living in, in the US for a period of time? Um, and also consider where are there more opportunities? Um, there are typically a lot of internship opportunities in cities, but they're probably going to be more expensive. Um, additionally, Transportation might be also easier to get to um, to and from work when you're in a city. Um, so again, just some things that you might want to consider. Another thing to consider is um, the program season. So this program does take interns um, at any time of the year, um, with you know with um, whatever you decide would be the start date with your host organization and we would definitely be happy to help you with you know um, figuring that out to what what would be best for you um, there's also more opportunity opportunities during the summer months um, however that may be more there may be more competition during that time because of summer vacation but there are other you know um, times of the year that you might consider um, doing if you choose to, you know, maybe in your fall semester, you decide to take, um, use, a, a, get accredited internship for the fall, and that might be less competitive as well. So aside from like program, like season, um, another thing to consider is the program length. Um, do you, um, are you able to spend 12 months in the United States? Um, would you like to consider something shorter? Um, is that something is, you know think about like affordability as well um is the host organization offering anything that is 12 months or do they only have a certain like four month internship program so these are all like a lot of different things that um you might consider another another thing participants tend to consider is placement services well um versus a self-placed internship placement services are great um we do have some students who um do choose to um use placement services but most of our students are self-placed and they do find the internships on their own through their own connections or different different uh, um, or other avenues which we'll discuss um in the next few slides um 
However, you know, placement um, services are a really good opportunity if, you know, if you are struggling potentially with finding an internship, but also to keep in mind that those internships may not necessarily be completely tailored to your specific interests and might be and might come at a higher cost when dealing with a placement service. Um, however, again, it could be just easier to find an internship and maybe it's something that you want to explore. We also do offer a lot of variety of resources to help um, help individuals like yourself find opportunities and take advantage of self-placed opportunity, um, self opportunities. Um, and the reason why we encourage this more so is so that you can find an internship that's really tailored to you and your interests. And, and maybe it's a company that you're really passionate about and um, it's some it's a, a company that you really feel that you'll learn something from. So there are different ways and um, something to consider. These are things to consider. Another thing to consider is to think about is this um, company going to be a right fit for me. And um, this is really important because you want, again, as I mentioned, you want to work with a company who you feel um, will, will give you um, the opportunity to grow and to learn and um, ex explore different avenues or even um, just increase your knowledge about a certain, your, your, or your knowledge in your academic field of study. So um, with that, um, the um, something to consider even when looking for this internship, most importantly, is the eligibility requirements for um, the intern visa um, to look into um, the host employer's eligibility requirements and proposed training. Um, we don't want to discourage you um, into looking at certain um, host employers if they don't, or think that host, certain host employers are bad because they don't meet the eligibility requirements. It's just that they may not necessarily meet the J-1 visa requirements. And maybe that's something that you can like um, look into further down the road in your career path. But again, just consider the eligibility requirements as well when looking for an internship. So um, I feel like this is one of the most important questions that a lot of participants are wondering is how do you how do you how do you find an internship um and there are so many different ways to find an internship and it's definitely possible you know um about 42.8 percent of participants use their network and a referral from a friend or a family or a past colleague you know we do ask all our interns how they find um find their internship. And we have um, so many different ways that people find um, find their internships. And, you know, given, given with the COVID, maybe things have shifted a bit, but here are, I do want to read some off like on, on this page, um, just because I find it really interesting to really understand and learn and show you how participants have been finding their internships. So for example, one participant, um, research all Michelin restaurants in San Francisco. Um, another got a list from their college with companies where previous students have interned or um, another one has, you know, a, um, her, uh, her dad has a friend in finance and in finance industry in California who was able to pass their resume to their company. Um, another participant found their Host employer through social media and applied for the position as soon as the um, as soon as it was posted. And another professor referred them to a virtual conference where they met this company. So there are different ways that that participants have been finding um, internships, and we do want to encourage you to really venture out and think of different ways. And again, we have so many resources that we'll provide with you to think about. Or, or to guide you in the kind of direction to really utilize your resources and think outside of box for how to obtain these internships. So we like to um, include this slide just to show you the different types of companies that we have previously, um, that have previously hosted um, 
hosted um, participants successfully. Um, so we have we have companies for um, like uh, very big um, corporate companies. Um, we have some nonprofit companies, smaller um, startups, and a, a wide variety of different types of internships. So we have like Human Rights Watch, the Mediterranean Shipping Company, um, SETI Institute, which was actually a really cool company where um, this participant worked with aerospace engineering and um, we actually have a blog post on him. So if you want to read more about different um, our participants experiences, we have a lot of blog posts about how they found their internships, what their internships were like and how, you know, successful they felt their internship programs have been with host employers such as these listed on the screen. So another thing we like to include um, is um, the tips from inter-exchange interns. And the reason why we like to include this is essentially because we like to really stress, um, you know, hear, hear it from firsthand um, participants about how they've gone, um, how they've gone about with finding internships. So participants have gone and review industry specific websites um, and student or professional associations. So they, they've they gone and done, done the work to really stay on top of their industry and like read about what's what's current, you know, what are certain projects certain um, host companies are working on and just like learning more about what is currently going on in their industry. And from there, you know, researching more into the um, host company. Another thing that you can do is pursue informational interviews with um, with certain with certain um, host organizations, and this will really help you um, stand out and show that you're curious about what a particular um, employee is doing at that company. And it also help you to learn more about um, to just learn more about the person and the company itself. Additionally, ask your professors about if there's any opportunities, you know, if you have one class that you absolutely love, you know, network with your professors, ask him and see if there are any opportunities or if there's anyone he knows um, working on what you're studying. And it really just helps, you know, there are just so many different ways that you can find um, internships. You can also um, target smaller firms. Maybe they are looking for more, um, more hands to, um, like learn to learn more from international students and maybe there's something you can contribute to that's um, a smaller team that they wouldn't necessarily find um, here in the U.S. by you know having an international um, perspective on things and also keep your social media professional we'll we have a few um, upcoming webinars where we discuss about how to build your online presence and really get your online um you know linkedin profiles to stand out so when you are applying you can attach that to your um add it to your resume or really show you know um present yourself in a more professional manner and additionally um actually it's really important to really understand the j1 visa rules um and i say this because you know i know that a lot of participants worry about maybe potentially um not knowing um uh, they're they're worried about host employers not hiring them because they need the J-1 visa um, or they're not a sponsor they don't sponsor people so if you know the J-1 visa rules you can come to the host employer and be like um, I've done my research I've done my work and I would like to intern with you and I there is a there is a a sponsor J-1 sponsor sponsoring agency who can help assist with the the sponsor um, J-1 visas process. So it's just really important to like learn about these things uh, ahead of time. Here um, again, you know, just similar to what I discussed earlier, again, the additional tips is just to be prepared, research that company, you know, update your resume and cover letters. Again, as I mentioned, we have a few webinars where we'll discuss um, how to update your webinar, I mean, your resume and cover letters. And um, another important tip is to set up a document uh, or a spreadsheet to save all your potential host detail that you've applied with. Um, when you're applying, you know, highlight your unique perspective, unique perspective as an international intern, how you, how you can essentially bring something different 
to the table that maybe um, your American peers may not necessarily um, be able to do so. And then show that you're um, motivated and, and passionate for the internship position. That's what really stands out. That's what will make you, you know, even like when you are per, um, pursuing those informational interviews, it just shows that you are you are on top of your game and that you are you're ready to contribute and really um, put your best foot forward with that host company. And then the lastly, like once you are complete and once you have um, applied with certain host companies to follow up on your application and make sure that you always follow up with a personalized thank you note if you have an interview or an informational interview or um, it just really shows that um, it shows um, your your courtesy of their time and that you are um, really thankful for for them considering you uh, for an internship so um now that uh, I just quickly want to go over how the whole J1 visa application process works. So we went over how to potentially find an internship and then also determine your eligibility. Once you've gone and done that, you can apply for the J1 visa sponsorship directly with InterExchange on our website. And from there, once you have completed the um, the application interchange inter will perform a initial review, uh, a formal review, and then we will conduct an interview with you personally and then perform any site visits if your host employer does need one. Um, we can go further into that um, if, you're, if you're curious about whether or not your host employer needs a site visit, um, just feel free to reach out to us after this webinar and we'll help assist you. And then if you are approved for the J-1 visa sponsorship, you can go ahead and attend the embassy interview um, where you will interview for the J-1 visa. And then if you are approved for that, you'll be ready to go to the U.S. and intern and train here in the United States. Uh, so how long will the J-1 visa process take? So the J-1 visa process um, uh, we typically suggest that um, you start your um, the whole process about six to eight weeks before your start date. And the reason why we do this is because, you know, it, you'll have to fill out your application and then also consider about the time it takes for you to go to your embassy, embassy interview and then receive your visa. However, InterExchange, like we do have one of the fastest review times of any J-1 visa sponsor. We do take one day to perform that initial review um, to ensure that your application is complete with all of the documents and that you meet the eligibility. And then once you're deemed, once it's deemed complete, we'll we'll give you an answer within those 10 days. So what is included in your inter-exchange program? So we actually include the accident and sickness insurance. So if anything were to go wrong on your program, you're covered for the entirety of your program. And in addition to the 30 day grace period at the end of your program, the CVIS fee is also included in the program fee, which is paid to the Department of Homeland Security. And then you also have, you will have access to the career training participant list where you can connect with different uh, career training participants who are currently on our program. Um, in addition to this, uh, we have 24-hour emergency support again. So if anything were to, um, or, um, any emergencies were to arise during your program, InterExchange will be here for you at all hours of the day to assist you with any problems that occur. And then you'll also have access to the Language Partner Program where you can get partnered with a fellow American who would like to um, practice perhaps their French or their Spanish and you'd like to practice more of your English with. And then additionally, you'll have resources for different events um, that is currently happening in the US or in your um, nearby area. You'll also receive housing resources and any uh, additional resource on how to adjust culturally to the U.S. if you are dealing with any culture shock. Um, so before I start the question um, and answer section, I do want to, um, you know, just like quickly say that we um, have more webinars coming soon. Um, next, um, again, like Tam had mentioned, this is the first of 10 um, webinars that we'll have every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Um, the next webinar will be um, about developing in-demand skills, like defining what those skills are, how you can gain them and how um, during your internship or 
prior to your internship and how you can maintain those types of skills um, throughout your internship and make that good impression with your host employer um, so that you are in fact um, maximizing your time here in the US. So I just wanted to open up the floor to any questions um, at this time. Awesome. We we do have a number of questions that have come in. Um, I think you a couple were about different different fields that we could sponsor. So I think you've answered that. But if anybody does have questions about eligible fields for internships, please let us know. Um, but one question that I did want to go back to: uh, what? So this is someone who is considering applying for the trainee visa. What is the maximum number of years after graduation? that someone can be can still be accepted for the trainee program so is there is there a maximum number of years since their graduation that they need to have in order to be eligible so there are no um, maximum duration of um or maximum length of years um i'm sorry i can you re just repeat that question again i'm not sure if i quite understood sure. so if someone how many years What's the maximum number of years after graduation for someone to be accepted as part of the trainee program? Do they need to have graduated okay. three years ago, five years ago? So there is no maximum like um, length of time from the date of your graduation to um, be eligible for the trainee program as long as you have graduated from um, a post-secondary um, school, then you are eligible for the trainee program as long as you have that one year of full-time professional experience outside of the United States, and then your um, professional experience would need to be related to your um, proposed field for your training program. And if you didn't have um, a post-secondary education degree, then you need to show that you have at least five years of professional um, work experience outside of the, uh, the U.S. and again would have to be related to your proposed um, um, proposed field of um, training. Great. Um, this is a question from someone who is currently in the United States. So they'll be in the United States until November 1st. When can they apply for the intern visa? Um, so this would depend on essentially like how long you have been in the US and the reason you are in the United States again if you're if you've only been here for a short period of time and you're here for tourism purposes then you may begin um, your intern um, then you may begin your application um, and apply for the US once you have left the, the United States so you can apply for the J1 intern training program you know once you once you leave the US and return to your home country I just want to clarify, so you have to be outside of the United States in order to apply for the J-1B. So you can maybe start your application with inter-exchange, like Fatima said, but you, you, there's, no, there's no way to just transfer from a, a tourist visa to a J-1B. So you do have to leave the United States and re-enter on a J-1B. Another question is going back to uh, inclusions. Uh, what, is the, what is the cost of visa sponsorship by inter-exchange? So our fees are dependent on the length of time you will be in the United States. Um, in our follow-up email, you'll receive um, all the information regarding um, fees. Uh, so you'll be able to generate um, how much the your program would cost based on the length of time or your proposed length of time. Great. And someone wants to know, because we did talk about patient contact, can internships be carried out in the field of public health research? So you are able to um, participate in a research type of or public, I'm sorry, what was that um, type of field public, again? Public, public health. Public research. health research. Yes, that is something that we could do. So as long that you know your um, your host employer does show that you'll be receiving training and in that field, and that you're not going to be doing an autonomous or independent research study, there is a separate kind of um, visa for re like specific 
independent research-based study. However, if it'll be more like training and it won't include any any animal care, then that's something that we can like um, sponsor. Great, I think this is the last question that I see. If someone wants to do a summer internship for 2022, when should they start applying to internship organizations or when should they start applying to organizations for internships um i would definitely um advise on starting now you know um this is definitely one of the reasons why we launched this webinar series for the fall is to really guide you and prep you to trying to get um the right resources to find that internship at this point because we do know that sometimes it does take some time depending on the host company you're trying to um, intern with so the earlier the better again um, it, we do suggest that you start working on your actual application for j1 visa sponsorship six to eight weeks before your proposed start date so now is like the best time to really go and search for internships and it'll give you more time to really think about what kind of internship you want and like think about the host employers you want to apply with Excellent. I think that's a great way of, of wrapping up today's session. If you if you do need additional advice, if you have questions about a US style resume or a cover letter or interview tips, please join any or all of our upcoming webinars. We were hopeful to, to be able to help you all uh, apply for internships this fall and spring and, and welcome you to the United States when, uh, when you're ready to intern abroad. So, Please join uh, future career guidance webinars this fall. Thank you, Fatima. This is a lot of information that you were able to cover uh, in, in the last hour or so. So thanks for going through and explaining all the, the nuances of the J1 intern visa and the J1 trainee visa. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you all for um, joining us today. And we'll we'll definitely send you that follow-up email. And hopefully we'll you can join us for more webinars to help you find that internship. Bye, everyone. Bye.